And he's not concerned Just like most choker dogs About clear cutting And exporting raw logs But he can't help thinking About a friend that he knew Who was killed on the job At just 22 starting to write folk songs about my family history in coal mining and logging and uh, my own experience as a logger in a, in a logging camp. And I put out an album called Coal and Wood Revisited and uh, one day I just strung them together chronologically and uh, that's where the idea for making them into a performance piece came from. Well the stories are the songs and um, my great grandfathers, two, two of them, both of my dad's grandfathers were coal miners and uh, then my grandpa and my dad and I were all loggers so four generations of John Gogo should tell the stories. Sam Wardle was a family man he had to take what he could earn he knew that something wasn't right but he could not voice concern complainers will be discharged the mine inspector laughed and the bosses got the profits And the miners got the share um, it, was, it was a really interesting process. I knew my grandfather um, and he was a uh, very stoic man, a man of few words. I'm glad that you met my father. He doesn't often talk a lot. No mention of the strikes or the disasters or the broken back he got. He's never been one for complaining. Those old timers are like that, of course. In fact, he keeps his mouth shut louder than anyone. Mostly, he talks to his horse. So his character was pretty easy to, to develop. Um, uh, and I had sort of free reign with my great grandfather because he died 15, 20 years before I was even born. So I never knew the man, uh, but I knew that he had come from the old country. And so I did a little bit of an accent. Uh, Hungarian or Austrian accent and uh... With Pompeii and in deadly conditions These miners were far from content When they organized a peaceful strike Strings were pulled and the militia was sent Evictions from company housing Blackballed in neighboring towns Ruthless, uncompromising as vindictive as it sounds. Meanwhile, back in the Naimo, yeah. a man named Robinson. Tried to make him a little bit funny, or at least he thinks he's funny. They call me Old Johnny Gogo. I am a bohunk, I am told. I have yet reached my 54th year. It is my back and my lungs that are old. The biggest challenge was p portraying my father. Uh, John's what they name me, too. Except they call me Kenny. Well, Kenneth. But Ken will do. Uh, I, I always had a great admiration for my dad and I thought he was a really funny guy so uh, I wanted to make him uh, sort of jolly and funny and uh, I found it to be um, a bit of a daunting task to step into his shoes. John went to work on De Corsi Island, Clarence to Northwest Bay, fallen bucking, yard and loading, hauling logs away. Well, it was hard work and dangerous, but neither man was belly aching. With so many out of work, it was a living they were making. As I was completing the writing process of the show, um, I realized that uh, it's all well and fine to be um, sort of celebrating uh, my heritage and my background, my family, but. Uh, then I started to think about, well, what about all the people that uh, weren't as fortunate? It was all well and fine for us European folks to come over here and uh, do what we do and what we did. And uh, there wasn't much consideration for the people that were already here. It's the culmination of everything I've done in my performing career in, in singing and writing and acting. I hope to perform it for as long as I continue to perform, not, not exclusively, but um, I hope to take it uh, across Canada, definitely around British Columbia. So far I have performed it in lots of community halls and a couple of small theatres and uh, it's designed to go anywhere. 
a lot of old ladies dragged their husbands out, their, their husbands who were formerly loggers, and uh, the last thing that these old guys want to do is go to a show where they're singing and storytelling, but once they get here and see the show, it's quite moving for them, and they usually line up to speak to me afterwards, and uh, what they really want to do is tell me their own stories about logging, and uh, it's, it's a very moving experience for them, even though they didn't want to go in the first place. <laughs>